everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is probably going to be a little bit controversial. That seems to be the trend anytime I bring this topic up. We're going to be talking about if children are too expensive to have. Before I go any further, if you have kids, I totally get you love your kids. You would do anything for your kids. You would spend all the money that you had and go broke and homeless for your kids. I totally understand the love that exists there. But there's also another subset of the population that has really questioned if they should have kids or not, if they can even afford kids. And I ended up reaching out to my Instagram following and getting a lot of insights from actual everyday Americans that are dealing with the cost of childcare and the cost of having kids. And so today's video is going to get real. I had some of you parents out there get real with me and I completely appreciated it. So I had put out this tweet and I tweeted, I don't have kids. I'm not in that world. I don't. Um, uh, but I just looked at the average weekly child care rates and I'm shooketh on how everyday Americans do it. Even on Instagram, I got a lot of great engagement. And I had someone specifically uh, quote tweet it and they said, I never understood how people continue to see children as a transaction. Your legacy shouldn't have a price tag attached to it. And this comment right here is what kind of made me want to do this video because um, I totally see where this person is coming from that um, if you want to have children and it, it's your legacy, you know, uh, they're carrying on your name and your qualities and your uh, knowledge and, you know, all of this and you want that um, to happen. And so I understand. Um, but unfortunately, this is the real world and the real world costs money. And you have to really consider that you don't want to leave yourself completely strapped. I had a lot of people share their situations with me. It was ab absolutely um, humbling that people actually came to me and messaged me directly with their stories, what's what's going on in their lives, how they're struggling, um, and how, you know, this is a, an issue that people don't really talk about because it's kind of pushed under the rug because of the simple fact that having children and being a parent is just such an amazing, lovely thing. And you don't want to not do that, right? You don't want money to get in the way of you being able to parent and um, have your legacy live on. And I, I totally get that. Um, but it was really refreshing as somebody who's on the fence about having children for many reasons. Money is not so much my issue, but it really got me thinking about this. And people, you know, were sharing with me and I'm somebody who's on the fence and I uh, just really appreciated the rawness and the, and the truth. There is a financially ugly side to parenthood. And I have some theories, you know, I have some things that I'm going to get into in terms of data that I actually look at. Uh, but I think that people like me who are on the fence, I think there's more of us out there now. I think that we are um, feeling more open, being able to come out and say, you know what, I don't know if I want to have children. And I think that making this decision to have children, um, it should be a more thoughtful decision because of how expensive it is to have children. So I just wanted to take a moment to go through some of these and I, they're all anonymous, but, um, you know, this one says we are drowning $275 a week for three days a week daycare. He's sick from daycare half the time and misses days, but I still have to pay for it. Um, our daycare would be 1800 a month for both. I quit my full-time job and now work part-time remotely. This is a situation I heard a lot from people that sent me DMs. Basically, one parent had to quit their job because them working made absolutely no sense because all the money they were earning working was going to daycare. And at that point, it's like, why am I even working? I'll just stay home with my child if it's not going to yield me any any much extra money above daycare. I'm just going to stay home with my child, right? And so a lot of people I came across have that scenario where one parent had to stay home. That kind of sucks. Like if you're a parent who enjoys your career and wants to work, that kind of sucks that you can't do that just because daycare is so crazy expensive. Um, so Texas over here about to pay $2,400 a month for a four-year-old and an infant. And our 15-year mortgage is $2,563 a month. So their daycare is just about the same cost as their mortgage. 
That is mind blowing. Okay. Um, I pay $1,400 a month for one kid at daycare. Crazy. $6,000 per month for our three kids. I responded to this person and I asked, is this a nanny um, or is this daycare? And sure enough, it was daycare, not a nanny. Um, I'm working from home with my younger baby and sending the older one to daycare for $1,400 a month just to give us some financial relief. It's so hard juggling both. So, you know, this this was, I, I got tons of these types of messages and it was it was mind blowing really to see how much money some people are spending on daycare. And it's like, how is the average everyday American even doing this? And the answer is, I don't think they are doing it well. Um, at least from the small sample size of people that I talk to, a lot of people are struggling. They're having to put retirement contributions to the wayside, investing to the wayside, other important uh, things that they need to do to the wayside until their kids maybe go to elementary school, high school, and they don't have to pay as much in child care. Finances are being strapped here due to the cost of child care, and it's wrong. And I'm not one of those people as a non-parent that's going to be like, oh, well, you chose to have kids, so you should pay for this, and it's your problem. If you had kids, you're going to have to pay for it. No, no, that's not okay. The United States of America should not be strapping parents who want to be parents and, and birth children. In fact, the U.S. birth rate has been declining. This is actually bad for the U.S. government. This is bad for the economy. I mean, this, Japan is a perfect example of how this is really bad when they have an aging population. The birth rates are down. People are not, you know, producing enough people to where the population is going to grow or stabilize. And so you can see all the way back from the 1950s, the birth rate has been on a sharp decline since then. And it's basically expected to continue to slowly decline for quite some time, at least till I'm dead. So what this is, this is, this is a big shift. This is a big change. And um, I came across this article that was, uh, what is this article? I, I don't know much about this source, but I just came across it. Uh, the mystery of the declining U.S. birth rate. And I don't actually think it's a mystery at all. No obvious policy or economic factor can explain much of the decline. I can think of a few economic reasons why the birth rate is declining and people are not having as many children or any children at all. First of all, the inflation rate for childcare has been above the average inflation rate for decades. And take surveys with a grain of salt, but I did find this survey that I think kind of gives us the essence of what I'm trying to say here. Based on the 2022 cost of care survey, childcare is not in the affordable range for most families. Of parents surveyed, 72% say that they are spending 10% or more of their household income on child care. Okay, in the, in the financial planning world, basically, we want to see people saving 10%, investing 10%. You know, if you can invest 10 to 20% of your income, um, that is great. Uh, the fact that child care is literally the same amount, 10%, 10 if they're spending 10% on average for child care of their income, um, they're basically taking the money that they could be putting away for their retirement and they're using that for child care. And then it goes on to say with a majority, 51% spending more than 20% of their income on child care. That is like mind blowing. But according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, child care is considered affordable when it costs family no more than 7% of their household income. When you're allocating to the different categories of your financial life, um, anything that is is in the 20% range is definitely a large, a larger cost. And when you think about having to do that on top of having to have a car payment, on top of having to have student debt, on top of all of the other things, a mortgage, et cetera, no wonder families are feeling strapped um, from having children. It's actually kind of funny to me because right now in the stock market world, you know, the macro world, we're looking at the economy and we're trying to figure things out. And essentially the unemployment rate has stayed pretty stable. Um, we have seen like a slight uptick in unemployment claims, but 
we've been staying pretty stable. And I think about how all of this kind of ties together, right? We have an excess of jobs. We have more job openings than people to fill the jobs. And if you think about how childcare has become very expensive for families, it's taking a large chunk of their income to be able to pay for it so that they can work. And then parents are having to either stay home and not work at all or pull back on hours or something, some mix of some kind, because it doesn't make sense to be in the in the labor force um, because of the fact that childcare is so expensive. You think about how all of those things kind of tie together and it starts to make like a little bit more sense. We've got so many job openings. We can't find people to work, but people are having to stay home with their children because childcare is too expensive. And it's like this uh, vicious circle, you know, this vicious cycle essentially. So it's just interesting to kind of think about it in that way. So there are a lot of people that are on the fence about having children these days, and the internet allows us to peek into some of their thoughts and their lives. You know, I I, I found this this forum on Reddit. It's a it's called Fence Sitter, and this is where people come and they talk about the fact that they're really confused. They're on sitting on the fence. They don't know if they should have kids or not. I consider myself to be a fence sitter, absolutely. But you you hear you know some people that are spilling out their guts here, and um, I thought that this was just interesting. This is a very recent post. I do think that I genu genuinely want a kid, but I can't seem to entertain or get excited about the idea when I don't know how we could afford to do it, okay? This story here is, it's out there more than you think. There are more and more people that are really questioning, I really want to have a kid, but I don't know if I can afford it. Um, the it's 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 crazy that the United States, you know, the tax credits that are actually offered to parents are not even enough to scratch the surface. Yes, there is a child tax credit. There is a, a child independent care tax credit. OK, but these tax credits don't even scratch the surface to how much a family is spending on child care. It helps when, especially when they actually expanded the benefit last year, which I almost think they just need to continue to do that. Um, but even then, but that helped. But even then, you know, there are parents that are spending 10 to $20,000 a year on child care plus, And it's just depending on what city you're in, you know, it can be very expensive in the big cities. It can be a lot cheaper in the small cities. Of course, more people that as they become more and more financially I guess, uh, independent or they, they, they get to a certain point in their finances, they are really thinking twice before bringing a child into their world just because of how much that would change significantly their financial pictures. Now, you can always make more money, right? Of course, a lot of people that um, are out there with children, they're probably thinking about this and they're saying, what's the big deal? Child care is affordable for me. I got this. No problem. Well, you probably have high income. If you don't have, um, if you're not a high income earner, this is going to be a real struggle for a lot of people. And most people do not have high income. Most people are everyday working Americans and, you know, the real median household income in the United States as of 2020, as of this chart was 67, um, uh, thousand dollars a year um you know when you're looking at when you're looking at spending potentially 10 to twenty thousand dollars plus a year on child care um that's eating up a lot of your income and think about it that's you know you pay taxes you pay for health care you pay for all these other things with your income you pay for your mortgage so you can have a roof over your head and then after that what's left over a large chunk of that is going to child care so that is I think a reason why a lot of people are uh, essentially, fence sitting as you know as this reddit as this reddit forum is discussing people are fence sitting because they don't know if they can afford it so is it too expensive to have kids i think for some people it probably is too expensive to have kids um do you find a way to make it work sure a lot of people do but this is why i think we are seeing people 
uh, that they want to have careers. They they want to be out there in the labor force. They enjoy making money. Um, but for most people, the decision is being based off of financial situations. And look, if having a child is something that you really want, you can work towards that. You can, you know, figure out how to increase your income or maybe you have to take on a second job or a, a side gig, freelance work, you know, something like that to make it work, which it's not impossible to do. You can do that. And I encourage people that really want to have children to, instead of saying, oh, I can't do this financially, think of how can I do this financially? What can I do? What changes can I make to where this won't strap me and I can live out my dream of being a parent? I would love to hear from you. Do you think it's too expensive to have children? How are you making it work? If you're a high income earner, you're probably making it work just fine. But everybody else, you know, I do want to hear from your experiences and um, figure out what what you've done and the moves you've made to to make it work for you. Or maybe not. Maybe it's not working for you and you're drowning and you need help. You know, I'm, I want to hear about that, too. I'm sure this is going to be controversial. I'm sure I'm going to get some some really ugly comments on this topic because it is an inflammatory topic because people love kids. I love kids. I absolutely adore um, the children that I have in my life. I really do think that uh, children are amazing and I, I would love to raise a child. Um, and maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know yet. I'm fence sitting. But I think for people that know what they want, um, I envy that. I envy people that know they want to be a parent because a lot of people that are fence sitting, they wish they knew. <laughs> they 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 really do, but they just can't make up their mind. Um, so just know that you're not alone if that's you, and it's okay. It's totally fine. We 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 need to not shame people that are feeling that way. Go ahead and uh, punch the like button for me. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I talk all things money. I focus on taxes and investing. I'll see you guys in the next video.